Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. We'll be starting in just a moment. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. We have a couple of announcements as folks get tuned in. We're so glad to have you with us for this session. Thank you all for joining us. First, we have a recording. We want to let you know we are recording this session and it will be available here in Excel events and on the Alliance website within the next two weeks. Next, you'll notice that this session allows you to have your camera and mic on. We ask that you follow our presenter's lead for when to do so. And lastly, if you'd like to ask a question during this session, please make sure and use the Q&A area to the right of the viewing window. All right, it looks like we are ready to begin. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and stop screen share and turn it over to our presenters. All right, Anjani, it's all yours. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Sam. Um, welcome, everybody. We're really excited to be here. Uh, so our presentation is on community engagement for hunger and food access. Um, and uh, my name is Anjani Moro. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the food policy and systems team supervisor at Jefferson County Public Health. And hi, everyone. My name is Paola Bad. I use she, her, ella pronouns, and I'm a community food connector for the Denver Department of Public Health and Environment. And we both work together for the Food and Communities Initiative. So what to expect today? Um, we, throughout the presentation today, we're gonna to be using Mentimeter uh, to make our presentation interactive and get some real-time responses to key questions around community engagement that's going to be able to support um, uh, you all throughout the presentation as well. Um, so we'll give an overview of the work that we do in food and communities, specifically through policy systems, environment change, uh, an overview around health equity and values um, to really be able to uh, level set and understand why uh, we focus on community engagement and some case studies and storytelling that we'll be able to um, provide some more examples. And we'll also be doing an introduction to community engagement, the spectrum of community engagement, identifying our purpose statements. And at the end of this presentation, you should be able to leave with some tools and resources in order to really implement community engagement in your programs. Okay, so let's get it kicked off um, with the Mentimeter. Uh, um, and uh, I believe uh, Paola will be putting the link into the website, uh, into the chat, sorry. Um, and I see your, I can do, <laughs> see your chat. Um, uh, so we like to use the Mentimeter, which is an online polling tool. It allows us to ask questions and gather many responses in one place. So on your computer or your phone, please visit this website and type in this code. It's 242-8068. And please keep this open uh, on your tab or on your phone. Um, and any questions that you have throughout the session, please feel free to put them in the chat or in the Q&A part. Okay, so um, let's get started. Let's see who all is in the room. So what do you see as the primary function of your agency and organization? So please type in the primary function or functions. Um, uh, that you represent uh, through the organizations that you serve or the programs that you're part of. Great, looks like we have folks in here from advocacy and education, sharing, ending hunger. <laughs> and you can feel free to put if you're from a nonprofit organization or from a government entity, grants, community, technical assistance and government. <laughs> yeah, it looks great to see a lot of folks here uh, around advocacy and policy and students as well. I'll give you all another maybe 10 seconds to put anything else in. Food bank emergency food assistance and child nutrition. We definitely work with a lot of organizations around that. Okay, 
So it looks like we have a lot of folks that, um, of course, are interested in ending hunger and working on nutrition, but it's great to see a lot of folks in advocacy and education as well. So this is the work that we do. Um, me and Paola are both part of Food and Communities, which is a five-year regional collaborative between three local public health departments in the Denver metro area. Um, so there's Denver Department of Public Health, um, who Paolo works for, uh, Tri-County Department of Public Health, and Jefferson County, who I represent as well. Um, so our focus is in very specific areas in the Denver metro region, and we work to increase equitable access to healthy, affordable, and culturally relevant food through policies and systems change. Our work is done regionally. Um, so Paula and I share a region in the Denver metro area um, that borders Jefferson County and Denver County that has been identified with a lot of barriers to food security. Uh, through our Food and Communities Initiative, we've been able to build relationships with the community across the Denver metro region as a whole. We partner with multiple agencies and organizations to learn from them and provide support through organizational development resources, technical assistance, training, and leveraging some funding when that's available. Uh, that's really how we build our priorities as a collaborative. Being accountable to our community members is key. The findings and resources we have created as a collaborative support our own internal efforts on how we create and systemize equity. From this work, our team has built and continues to build relationships and really learn from community organizations that impact our programs and efforts, which we'll, we'll, we will provide later in this presentation. Um, so for us, really learning from the community shapes how we deliver our services, our programs, and how we can advocate for policy change. So our focus of our program and as public health departments is to better serve our residents through the health equity approach. Health is a human right and disparities in health are largely influenced by socioeconomic factors. Health equity impacts food access and food access impacts health equity. Food access, especially nutritious and culturally relevant food is a key social determinant of health as it directly impacts an individual and community's well-being. So recognizing that most folks in this room probably work in a lot of different capacity in public service and in food systems, this can really resonate with a lot of different types of programming. Any public facing work has elements of health and socioeconomic equity. It's important to recognize the impact of systemic injustices that disproportionately affect Black, Indigenous, and people of color and other underserved communities. Um, this really affects health outcomes and overall community well being. So we look at the larger systemic issues that impact hunger because hunger is a result or a symptom of poverty, housing instability unaffordable health care, inaccessible education, and inequitable, pol inequitable policies across um, the country, our state, and even within our own municipalities. In order to uphold ourselves to support equity, um, you're going to hear the term equity a lot in this presentation, and you're going to hear the term community engagement a lot in this presentation. So we really need to be able to define these terms and the way in which we hold ourselves accountable is to really develop trusted relationships with our community. Uh, we have created guiding principles to indicate important decision making on how we work to do more robust community engagement. So these are the values in which we focus our efforts through food and communities. We've developed this across our program and through our regional efforts. If we hope to change systems in a way that is truly community led, we know that we need to partner with communities that have been historically been excluded from decision making spaces. So we invest in long term systems change, prioritize collaboration and working towards community based food systems. We really strive to embody equity and center racial justice in our work. And we use our collective voice to really address the root causes of hunger. So we see ourselves 
in a government setting to not create programs we think are best, but instead to really highlight and support what's already happening on the ground. It's really important to collaboratively work with organizations, businesses, and other community groups as they know and can really inform the solutions that will improve access and lead to better social determinants of health. So in that, in order to close equity gaps and be accountable to our values, we need to invest in direct participation from impacted communities to develop and implement our operations. And so that is why we really focus on community engagement. It can be challenging to know how to get started or how to continue. So the rest of our presentation is focused on ways in which we define community, how we currently engage, and then tools that our team has developed for our own internal use, but also provide as a resource to other community organizations and agencies, such as you all in the room today. Uh, so now I'm gonna pass it back to Paola to talk a little bit more about community engagement and what it really means to define our communities. Thank you so much for that, Anjani. So now I'm gonna ask everyone to return back to that Menti meter that we all opened. So you can go to the menti.com and type in that, that code 2428068. We're gonna go to our next question. Um, so for this question, we really want you all to define community. When you use the word community, who are you referring to? We know that community is not a monolithic term. So when I say community and I'm working in government, I might not be talking about the same community that maybe someone in Fort, in Fort Collins here in Colorado, I'm in Colorado currently. So someone that like in a different city is referring to in their organization to their community, right? Like, are you referring to immigrants? Are you working with youth, senior citizens, with students, with specifically indigenous communities? Who is your community? Who is a recipient of your organization's service? So let us know, who are you currently serving? Who do you mean when you use the term community? And it's really important to identify who your community is because this is who you will be engaging with whenever you're running program or inviting people to different, like when you're surveying or doing focus groups or different methods of engagement. Mariana, I see your hand up. I was going to say, we have had a number of folks who have joined since you walked everyone through Minty. Can you redirect everyone of how to log into Minty.com and get the code incorrectly? Yeah, yes. that was a question. Thank you. So um, in order to access our Menti meter, um, folks can visit the website www.menti.com. I will go ahead and paste that in the chat as well. And then you are going to type in, in there the code 2428068. And then that's going to allow you to access the question. And right now we're answering the question of who does your organization mean by the term community? So we're seeing a lot of folks, we are in a hunger, the hunger free community summit. So it makes sense that a lot of you, um, your community is food insecure people, people with lived experience, neighbors with lived experience, the LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus community, kids and families all the residents that, that live in the communities that we're serving, food banks, food pantries, yes, seniors. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, let's see, it's not letting me scroll down. Why isn't it letting me scroll? All right, maybe? Ah, I don't know why it's not letting me scroll. Oh, there we go. It's kind of scrolling, sorry about that. So volunteers, college student, those impacted by hunger, very specific zip codes, perfect, volunteers. Thank you. Yes, these are all um, who you're all serving. This is, I want you guys to keep this in mind because we're going to be talking, walking you through a series of um, other activities and we want you to really think about who is that community that you're serving. We're really in a time where Everyone wants to do community engagement. So again, 
let's think about who is it that we're referring to? Who did you write about? Because you will play a critical role in cultivating community and in creating spaces of participation. Like Anjani mentioned, community engagement is the key to closing equity gaps. Like, are we creating those spaces where the youth and the families and people that are food insecure, how are they playing a role in the decision-making in our organization? Right. This matters because it's a catalyst for resiliency, for self-determination, for connection and liberation. It's the way to move towards more equity centered solutions that meet the actual needs and wants of community. It really fosters trusting relationships and it creates pathways for shared power and decision making. It also celebrates the community work that is currently being done because when you engage folks, you also understand what are they leading and how can we partner with community, with our youth, with people with lived experience to lead the work, right? This community engagement makes for successful, reliable, and impactful organizations. From a public health perspective, involving our community and in health initiatives has really fostered connectedness and trust, and it's really improved how we do assessments and how we build the capacity of those that we're working with. So this is why we, this work is really important to us. So when you all start to actively plan on doing community engagement through surveys, focus groups, community events, you will naturally engage with the current leaders in your community and you're going to build deep relationships with them. And this is gonna to lead to you be more intentional about who you're engaging with and why you're engaging with. You're going to strive to create a culture of inclusion in the spaces you're convening. And this is gonna to lead to a lot of transparency on what is your goal as an organization and what is your role in community. You're also going to start doing everything in your power to remove barriers to participation for meetings that you're convening. And you're going to prioritize staff capacity to do active outreach to get those that you want to engage with in your events and at your spaces to give you feedback. You're also going to get better at how you frame invitations to engage. And you're going to prioritize partnerships with folks with lived experience and hunger to really drive this work and pay them as consultants and experts in this field. Not only will all of this create opportunities for engagement and partnership, but also opportunities for leadership development. And the most important outcome of doing this work is it shifts how we all share power and how we hold ourselves accountable to the work that we say we're going to do. So this work is important because it allows us to share power with our community to really create thriving communities. All of, all of this is the impact of community engagement work. And this was really needed to live and breathe equity work. By implementing all of these strategies and all of these things, um, Anjani and I have heard from many of our partners that they oftentimes forget that we're government entities because of how we show up. We've really tried to do all of these things when we're engaging with people with lived experiences, with other food pantries, with schools, with community gardens, with community residents. They forget that we're government entities because we're really striving to allow a lot of them to lead through those relationships that we've built. So these are really great outcomes that we've seen. Outcomes that we've seen. <laughs> So now we're gonna go back to our Mentimeter. So again, go to www.menti.com. And again, I'll post it in the chat. And I want you to, all, to share with us, how are you engaging your community? So again, go back to the Mentimeter and let us know how are you currently engaging your community? And it's easy to think about the community that you've already defined and think about the exact engagement tactics that you've taken for that particular constituent group. It looks like we have focus groups, um, surveys for sure, health fairs, listening sessions. So that's great to hear. We'll be talking about listening sessions later. Baking together. I love that. Being in community, doing something together. <laughs> Zoom meetings. 
I think a lot of us have learned how to be able to shift <laughs> into doing Zoom meetings and, uh, and how we engage our community. Education forums and social events. Yes, lots of listening sessions. Oh, I'm really excited to talk a little bit more about that later. It looks like there's a lot of great things that you all already doing with engaging your community. See, so, yeah, I guess we could go back to the slide. Um, so thank you for all of those answers. <laughs> uh, you know, now we've really got our wheels turning on how we engage community. And it's really great to see what uh, your organization or your programs have already been doing. So let's think about it along a spectrum. So we just asked you all to share how you are currently engaging with your community. This was really to identify where you're at, at this in this spectrum. When we talk about community engagement, we like to refer to the spectrum of community engagement to ownership. This was a tool created by Facilitating Power, and it's used to really assess where an organization currently falls when it comes to engaging their community and where they aspire to be. There's a lot of different community engagement spectrums, but we really use this because it highlights the impact, the overall goals and the activities to really be able to fully assess where we're at. Uh, this spectrum can be used by government agencies, nonprofit agencies, um, community uh, organizations and uh, groups and coalitions um, working to facilitate community participation. Um, anybody that's on this call here really can use this. Uh, this tool looks linear for simplicity but truly is a system of processes. It's holistic and it's, and it's complex and variable. And at many times you might find yourself at multiple places among the spectrum, uh, specifically around specific programs that you have or your entire organization. Um, and some of you may have seen the spectrum before. And in the next slide, I'll dive a little deeper into what each phase looks like. And Paola has put that link into the chat of this um, spectrum that was developed by uh, Facilitating Power. So we simplified the spectrum even more um, that we just showed you. The reason is it's really important to honestly assess our organizations and our agencies within the spectrum in order to develop the programmatic activities that can really be actionable. Our priority is I just asked you all to share how you're currently engaging your community. This was really to take that and to be able to find yourself along the spectrum. So the spectrum walks through different strategies of community engagement, and they have a lot of different activities and tools. So I'll start from the left to the right. And the first, part is ignore. That's technically not really part of the community engagement spectrum. This is really where organizations make all the decisions themselves. Um, and it's really important to see like where this starts at and where we go towards uh, on the right hand side to really uh, be able to build that community power. So number uh, one on the spectrum is inform. This is organizations that provide their community with relevant information um, through flyers and fact sheets and presentations. And it's really a one-way street and does not necessarily have action items um, to support that. Um, the number two is consulting. In this stage, organizations gather input from their community. So they wanna hear what's happening um, through focus groups and surveys and public comment, uh, but there's not necessarily transparency of that feed of how that feedback is gained or accountability of how that feedback is going to be implemented. Uh, number three is involving. Here is when we really start to see change um, to go towards impact. The community now has a larger voice. 
In this stage of the spectrum, organizations ensure community needs and assets are integrated into program planning and implementation. This includes interactive workshops, community listening sessions, or other community conversations. Then there's the collaborate. Uh, organizations here are really starting to delegate that power. So they ensure that community plays a leadership role in decision making and the implementation of the decisions. This can include community advisory boards, MOUs, co-designing the work. This could also mean leadership um, within organizations and how you share and distribute power and foster leadership in others. Uh, and then five is defer to, and this is the stage that I think that we all should aspire to be in. This fosters true democratic participation and equity through community-based decision-making. Power is not only shared, but it's also handed to community and everything is guided by the community in the planning, in the action, even the budgeting, and everything here is through community ownership. For us in food and communities, I would say that our work kind of falls between that involving and collaborating. We really aspire to defer to our community. However, we do recognize um, the barriers that play in certain governmental systems. Uh, for example, like some processes and barriers that our roles bring. We recognize the difficulty of moving def uh, towards defer to However, we try to ensure in our operations, transparency, accountability, and other ways in which we can move towards defer. I wanna mention that the, su su the success of our work will really depend on how we frame the engagement, the language that we use, how we really do outreach, how we do active outreach, more than just sending an email or um, you know, sharing flyers, is like really developing those trusted relationships where you can start doing some of those one-on-ones. Or if you are coming here from a food pantry, how you're really involving your the decision-making or the understanding from every person that walks through that door. Um, and really the transparency on how you gain that information and use it. This is all really important to understand because if intentional efforts are not made to break down barriers to community voice, then by default, we can actually marginalize our communities and cause harm. So now I wanna give you the time to think about where you feel your organization falls on the spectrum. And feel free to reference the link that um, Paola put in the chat with the uh, facilitating powers uh, spectrum. And remember, it's really honest in order to be able to move towards that transformative change. It's okay to say if you're an inform or consult, it's really important to be able to see where we're at. So we, the processes and the activities that we do will be very successful in order to move towards that defer to, as that can take months or years. It's, it's really just a system of processes. So I'll give you, give you a minute to um, kind of think about it and uh, see where you think your program or your organization falls along the spectrum, because this is gonna really be able to help you um, figure out the resources uh, to use uh, moving forward. So it looks like we have a lot in collaborate, um, consult, involve, we have a defer to, that is amazing. I'd love to hear a little bit about that. <laughs> um, a lot in the consult phase. We have a lot in inform too. Yeah, feel free to give yourself another 10 or 15 seconds um, to maybe think of where you think your organization is at. Okay. All right. So Thank you for sharing where you fall on the spectrum. 
As you think about how you currently engage your community and, and identify where you aspire to be, uh, it's really important to ask yourself why we're doing this. If you're just engaging community because, uh, you know, it, it is something nice to do, or if it's a checkbox in a way, then you could fail to gain trust in getting sincere responses and engagement. You must genuinely see engagement as integral to our work operations in order to be sustainable and provide value to our community. So we can build trust and serve our constituents properly. So how do we move from planning and talking about this work as a theory to actually operationalizing? Um, I really would like us all to ask these questions of really defining our community, which we've already done. What are the objectives and desired outcomes for involving? Are you willing to implement and make your changes based on what you hear? What is your purpose of engaging the community? Engaging community can take time. And are you willing to share power? Think about where you're, you currently fall in the spectrum and where you aspire to be. So I'm going to pass it back to Paola to go through a short activity that's going to really be able to support you to move forward from theory to practice. Thank you so much, Anjani, for that. And now we really want to, again, part of our interaction in this is we want you to really place yourselves in this work. How do you want to go about doing this? We had you define your community. You shared with us how you're currently engaging your community. You identified where you fall in this spectrum. And now we also want you to think, where do you want to be in that spectrum? And in order to do that, we need to define our purpose. Like Anjani said, one of those questions we need to ask ourselves, what is our purpose? So for the next about like four or five minutes, I really want you to all write down a purpose statement. So I don't know if you want to open up a Word document on your computer, grab some paper and pencil, and really just write a purpose statement for why you want to engage your community. What is your intention? What do you want to learn from community? Um, you can refer to some of the examples on this slide and really just do like as the blank organization, we want to engage our community in blank method in order to blank. And some examples are like, as a pantry, our end goal is to end hunger. So our purpose to engaging our participants with lived experience and hunger is to inform what types of food we should be purchasing. This will ensure that our pantry provides the types of foods that our community loves and knows how to use in their everyday lives. That's an example of a purpose statement. If you are in leadership of your organization, your community members are your employees. So a purpose statement could be like, as a CEO, I want to engage my staff in the revision of internal policies and procedures so I can ensure I'm fostering a culture of inclusion and transparency and how we operate as an organization. Now, those are just some examples of purpose statements on who's your community and why do you want engagement and what is that desired outcome? So again, just take it like, I'm going to have you all take like about two minutes. And then this is a portion where I am going to ask one of you if you could share your, your purpose statement when you're done. I'd love to hear one or two statements. So I'm, I am going to ask one of you to unmute, but I'm going to give you like about a minute or so. Let's really think about this. And we really want to operationalize this where we need to start planning for it. Therefore, what is our goal behind this? Why do we want to engage people? Why do we want to run a survey? Or why do we want to host a listening session? Or why do we want to start an advisory board? Or why do we want to contract promotoras in our work? Really define what is that purpose for this work? All right, I'll give everybody about another couple of seconds. I should have timed this. I didn't. All righty. If someone has a purpose statement written, would someone like to share it, please? I know we have audiences and we have a hand up. So, Banu, please 
unmute and share. What is your purpose statement for engaging your community? Hello, Paula, Anthony. So my <laughs> um, purpose statement is as the communal founder of a nonprofit organization that focuses on food sovereignty, I want to proactively engage with the marginalized communities we serve and promote healthy, thriving environments that educate and bring awareness that food is medicine. Wow, that was powerful. Thank you, Banu. You did that in two minutes, Banu. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, anyone else want to share? And if not, at least we got one. Yay. Any other brave soul out there? I can share. Oh, go for it. Uh, my name is Jake Fender, and I work with the American Red Cross in Butte County, California. Uh, we have a new program that we're piloting called the Community Adaptation Program. So as the Red Cross Community Adaptation Program, we want to engage the various minority cultural groups across uh, race, class, and geographic location within Butte County, California to increase resiliency before, during, and after disaster, including decreasing food insecurity, which for us is high, uh, and uh, improving mental and physical health and adequate and safe housing for those in need. So it's a lot of things. Yeah, that's an ambitious purpose statement, Jake, but I, today you're going to get some tools on how do we actually make that purpose statement come to life. So we're going to share some tools with you all. And thank you both, Jake and Benu, for sharing those purpose statements. And I hope that you all really took this seriously and took the time to write this because this will really get you started. If you haven't really done, if you fall more in that informed category, I'm really hoping that this can spark an interest in like, how do we want to engage our community? And it's really motivating you to move forward in this work. So I also want to talk about how the reality is, is that we can write purpose statements on how we want to engage our community, but there's so many challenges to operationalizing that purpose statement, right? The reason why this is this work is hard, it's because it's not easy to do community engagement. It, it's really hard work. It takes time. There's a lot of layers. So what are some challenges that you all think might hold you back from achieving your purpose statement? So we're going to go back to that Menti meter. So again, menti.com, put in that code, and we want you all to write down what might be some challenges that you might encounter when trying to really operationalize that purpose statement. So what are some challenges to hosting a listening session if you've never done that before? Or to starting a community group if you've never done that before? Or what have been challenges to surveys that you've done in the past? And maybe why you don't want to do a focus group um, because you've met other challenges. What have been those challenges? Let's talk about that because it's real. This is what keeps a lot of us from actually doing the work and staying in that planning phase. So burnout, limited resources, it's real. The social justice work is hard. <laughs> so that's very real. Limited staff time, very real, right? Community engagement takes time. Getting folks together. Yeah, like what are the good times of the, of the day that people want to convene, right? Land access and finding enough funding. Yeah, funding is a big issue. We don't have the funding to pay people as consultants. How are we supposed to engage them, right? Um, disconnection between volunteers and the people we serve. Yeah, that's really big. Like, how do we bring people together in a space and share power, right? And and come to common agreements. Big partners don't want to get in the weeds. Yeah, some people really just don't want to prioritize this work or really do that nitty gritty on the ground work and do phone calls and, and canvassing, door knocking, right? Yep. Giving relief in their schedules. Yeah, time, right? It, it's hard to work. Um, engaging people with lived experience, like they're already very busy trying to make ends meet. So it is hard. Misconceptions about who's impacted, yep. Being new, accessibility, prioritizing BIPOC communities, yep. All these are really real challenges to community engagement. All right. Let's we'll see, it's not letting me scroll. Let's see. 
So I can't see this one down here. There we go. Navigating competitive relationships. Yes, that's a good, yeah, that's a big one. So all of these are really great challenges to community engagement, and they're very real. And I, I'm going to say that we've seen all of that. Like, we do a lot of robust community engagement. Like Anjani shared, we, we, we try to really collaborate and involve with our partners. And we've heard all those challenges that you shared, right? Like, putting this practice like this theory into like actual practice and operationalize it sounds great but it's really hard people get stuck in the process don't know how to get started oftentimes like you all mentioned there isn't a budget for this language is a barrier right organizations sometimes feel like we won't be accountable we won't have the right partners for it outreach is time consuming all of the things that you all share and what is the solution honestly doing the work you won't know until you do it on how you're going to really tailor your services to this so now story time i'm going to share a story about putting this work into practice i used to work as a food pantry coordinator in a wraparound service organization in denver metro called growing home in our pantry i was the only paid staff and our pantry ran monday through saturday from noon to from 10 to noon and we had a shopping model where folks could choose the food that they wanted and it was a first come first serve basis and my budget this was pre-pandemic but it was 400 dollars for the month and we primarily gave gave out dried and canned goods purchased at a cheap rate from our local food bank and we served about 250 families a month and they could only come to our pantry once a month and let me just say and i, I know that a lot of you will resonate with me running a food pantry it's really hard and every day my participants really shared with me about their experiences, about what they didn't like, about the food that it wasn't what they wanted, or there wasn't enough food, or why couldn't they come more than once a month, or why weren't we open in the evenings or on Sundays? And our participants just had so much to say about our programming, and not only them, our volunteers had also so much to say on how we can have better streamlined processes, on how it was really hard to have to cap families with a certain amount of foods that they could get they also would share with me that why was it that we were getting a lot of expired food from our grocery rescue efforts and it was really hard to gather all of this feedback i honestly didn't know what to do we had also done surveys before but people didn't like to take our surveys because the reality was like we didn't have the budget to make the changes that people wanted like i was the only staff already working monday through saturday i was not going to work on a sunday and in the evening right like so we were making the changes that people were sharing in the surveys so no one wanted to fill out our surveys to my luck growing home was really doing advocacy and community organizing however this was primarily for our education and housing justice so i started working more with my community organizing and using the skills that i learned from her i started being more intentional about listening so a lot of my participants and volunteers had a lot to say. So it was just more intentional about like, all right, what do I do with this information? How do I really actively listen, involve, and collaborate with my participants and volunteers? So I started asking key questions rather than doing a survey. I just started having one-on-ones and asking people when they were in the line or they were checking out before they were leaving or as I was helping them carry boxes to their cars. I started asking them like, what would make your experience better? How, how can I improve this experience? And would you like to join a program advisory committee to start helping make our pantry better? And this is something that we did. Once we had enough people that were interested and had a lot to say, um, we invited them to join on a Saturday, like after our food distribution. And it's like, let's learn about our pantry. So I gave a presentation on our budget, our operations, and I asked them to help guide me and together, we came up to solutions to some of the things that they were complaining that they didn't like. They came up with their own solutions. And I told them like, all right, let's make a plan. Let's pilot some of these solutions. And we ended up remodeling our pantry. We made a list of must have items that we should always have and must nevers. We also started working with an advocacy organization in our, in our state called Hunger Free Colorado to advocate for food pantries to be able to purchase more from our local farmers because the community members wanted fresh foods. They didn't want that canned food that we were providing. So it allowed us to really step into more of an advocacy role because that's what our community wanted us to do. This work, I'm saying all of this to really just share that this work is messy. It's hard. I didn't have a guide work, 
a guidebook. We just started inviting people and asking them questions, creating solutions, and together piloting that. And as a result, a lot of our participants were much happier when they came. They were now just really applauding the work that we were doing. And um, we saw a huge increase in participation because then everyone started to be like, hey, like they're doing things right. Like they're, like they're listening to us, like join. So we went from serving 250 people to 400 people, which showed us that there was just a huge need in our community. But also by working with our community, we could have solutions on like, do we need to do more advocacy, maybe beyond food justice and other things. We had a community group that was there with us to help us on how do we continue moving forward? How do we address these issues? And then obviously a pandemic hit, but we knew that any challenge that came our way, we could now address it because we had been asking questions, we had been pivoting, we had a group of people that would help us in everything. And then another cool outcome was a lot of the staff, the community members that we were engaging then became part of our staff too. We started creating leadership pipelines, right? To be more representative of who we were serving. Every organization here today has the capacity to do this work. Um, and resource limitation can really impact our ability, but commitment and creativity can really um, kickstart this work and eventually it will lead to more funding and and it, together with your community you'll be creative and find the way to address a lot of these challenges and now i'm going to pass it back to Anjani to tell you what is how is it that we've put like this advisory board that i helped to start up and how do we do more intentional one-on-ones and all we've started to create a tool for you all to actually operationalize this work and i'm going to pass it on to Anjani to tell you how you all can use this tool well, Paola, I've heard that story a lot of times and it's just so inspiring and it's a great way to see like how community activation can really develop success in our programs and our work. So um, recognizing that story and recognizing all of the different feedback that you all have given in the Mentimeter and things, um, you've all learned the importance of doing authentic community engagement, continuing to do authentic community engagement. You've been able to define the communities you serve, identify how you currently collaborate with your community and what stage of engagement you're working in. And uh, you've some of you have probably crafted a purpose statement or now have a template in order to do so on how you want to engage community. The next step is really putting into practice or operationalizing that purpose statement. And in order to do that, um, we have created a toolkit with easy to use templates on how to run coalitions, advisory boards, how to do a listening session if you've never done a listening session before. We have used all of our learning in doing this work to create the templates and the guides. And the toolkit is currently mostly in English. Uh, some of the templates are bilingual in Spanish, um, but they live in the Google Drive right here. Um, Paola put it, the link right in. So use this as a resource. Um, to move forward. Um, so we understand that all communities are different. Uh, however, the process and frameworks we use to develop uh, deep trusting relationships with how we engage can be similar across all the communities and sectors we work. The outcomes are that we that it will differ from community to community. So this toolkit has a folder for each engagement method from the spectrum we've learned about earlier. In this toolkit, you will find templates and guides to help you start operationalizing, moving from ignoring and informing to consulting, involving, and collaborating. Uh, these are really helpful resources um, that were helpful for us and for the organizations that we provide support to. Uh, this work is all about trial and error, admitting wrongs and always evaluating and striving to do better as we continue to do that as well. Um, we encourage you to use ourselves, uh, our fellow practitioners, especially, you know, the folks that uh, had put differ to or other things along the spectrum to really grow in our understanding of community engagement and be thoughtful about our own practice of the engagement techniques. So this Google folder is still being developed by with community input. 
Um, if there is an organization that really sees a need for something like participatory budgeting, we've been figuring out, we've been um, working on creating a template for that. We'll add that on there. Uh, the vision for the future of this toolkit is to have a folder for each part of that community engagement spectrum and templates for implementing and operationalizing the work through all of those different action steps that will get, uh, get you across um, the spectrum. So um, Food and Communities has been able to successfully host uh, many listening sessions that have led to either coalitions or advisory boards. And we have always tried to do contracts with promotoras and community leaders to do the work and really uplift what's already happening. We have supported the operationalizing storytelling and improved how we administer surveys. And we want to really share our best practices with you through the toolkit. And some of the outcomes of these toolkits, I'd like to kind of go over. Uh, so this past summer, uh, we all learned about the White House conference um, that was uh, happening. We connected with Hunger Free Colorado, which is a statewide organization um, that supports food resources, that meets existing needs, and really drives policy systems and social change to co-host a listening session, which Paola is screen sharing for you right now on what that listening session folder looks like. As we all know that there was a really short turnaround for providing feedback for the conference. Um, and they did provide a toolkit that we also used as well, but we were really able to make use of this toolkit to pair with that and um, methods of real active outreach with the trusted relationships we've developed and the uh, organizations that we collaborated with. So in a matter of just a few short weeks, we were able to host a bilingual listening session with interpretation services and community compensation to over 150 attendees across the state of Colorado. And the development of this toolkit supported an easier and efficient method to actually engage and get this going in a matter of weeks. And something else is, uh, you know, uh, the development of an advisory board and other listening sessions. We have been able to guide organizations, provide robust TA, technical assistance. Um, and we worked with a food waste organization called We Don't Waste, and they really wanted to start a community advisory board uh, for their programming and innovation for their mobile market. Through the one-on-one -on -one that we had with them, we were able to talk with them and learn that what they're really wanting to do is really host a listening session. Um, we don't waste staff shared how they wanted to test the waters of their community and what the services were like, how they should improve, and we're not yet ready to do that convening uh, to create an advisory board. So they used the listening session folder and in one month planned and executed virtual listening sessions with a lot of success. The sessions led to implementing the addition of things that they didn't have uh, uh, ser providing as services. For example, they recognized that they needed adult diapers in their markets. And this led to a shift in what types of food that they had available to really support their community. In the future, they plan on inviting those folks that were so engaged in those listening sessions to now be a part of that advisory board. So this toolkit was really created um, from what we've heard from partners. And, uh, and many of them wanted to prioritize storytelling. So in partnership with a community leader who we uh, uh, supported through uh, leading this effort to develop storytelling as an organizational practice through workshops and led to robust story collecting templates, forms, catalogs that organizations can use in their operations authentically. So Paola, thank you so much for going over um, uh, a screen sharing what it looks like in our toolkit. So uh, there was a lot of information today. <laughs> you all learned the importance of doing authentic community engagement and what it looks like in action. You reflected on what is happening in your organization right now. So how can we move towards community ownership? I encourage you all for the next step is take that um, activity that you did and create an action plan and discuss your purpose statement and tool you're interested 
uh, and how you uh, see progressing along the spectrum with your teams. Many of you showcase clear and strong examples of how you already engage and how you can build off of existing efforts as well. So, and also identify what you need help with. We have identified there are a lot of challenges. So uh, we provide this toolkit for you to use as guidance to your team to increase that authentic community engagement and what works for you and your community. And just to leave this to remember, by working towards a space where you defer to your community, in the decision-making of your work, your organization is going to lead and build trust and make true impact. So thank you all so much for uh, listening in to our session. Um, and I, I know there's only about six minutes left, so I'll open it up to any Q&A that, or any questions you have, and we'll provide the, a, <laughs> the answers. Thank you, Benu. Thank you, Hallie. We hope that the toolkit is helpful for you all. And Judy, can you share your email in the chat? Oh, yes, I can do that. Mariana? Mariana? Uh, yes, I, I was just curious to see if we could get a copy of the slides and the toolkit uh, via email. I don't seem to find the chat here. I don't know. Oh, maybe to the right, right? On to the top right? Yeah, there might be an arrow that you click on, Sam. Is that correct? Yep, there's a little blue arrow as you hover over the chat. You can open or you can close the chat window. You also feel free to unmute and ask a question. That's great. And we'll upload all of these slides um, into the software here. So after the event, we'll have a recording available and the slides available. And we'll make sure that these links are present as well. Okay, thank you. I should also add that we have um, uploaded a, 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 a one pager that has a lot of our links, um, the template for the purpose statement and um, links to the spectrum and also links to the toolkit. Um, hopefully that's accessible, but uh, either way, the links are will be in the presentation as well. Yeah, but if you don't have other questions, we really, again, like underneath said, take those purpose statements with your teams and really talk about it. Like, where are we at in the spectrum? And if we really want to be an organization that is truly community led and community informed, or we want to push community informed policy, like use this toolkit to start collaborating with your communities, to creating those spaces to bring community in, to shape those solutions, to shape those decisions, so you can be a better organization or you can pass better and more robust policy. But thank you so much, everyone. Wait. Thank you both. Anjani, Paola, such incredible content. What a great presentation. Thank you for uh, giving us lots of tools and resources. I want to make sure everyone knows that up next is an opportunity to meet other summit participants through the networking opportunities. To join this session, click networking in your navigation bar to the left of your screen and then click join. That concludes our workshop today. To exit this session, please click on the red phone icon at the bottom of your screen and then click leave. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you both for a great presentation. Thank you so much. Bye, Anjani and Paula. I don't know. Thanks for coming. <laughs> virtually hear you. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>